Sing this all over the building. A blessing from you, God. A blessing from you. If you're ready to receive a blessing, lift your voice in your hands at the same time. Say a blessing. A blessing from you. Oh, 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 oh. a blessing from you. 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 A blessing from you, God. A blessing from you. Pour it out, Jesus. A blessing from you. Pour it out, Jesus. A blessing from you. Peace is a blessing. A blessing from you. Your grace is a blessing. A blessing from you. My salvation is a blessing. Psalms 113. Psalms 113. Put it up so we can read it together. Praise God. God bless you. Welcome. God bless you. Look at your neighbor and say good morning. Y'all don't say good morning when y'all get up in the morning, huh? Y'all kind of grunt at each other. Well, we in the house of the Lord. Say good morning. Say good morning. I'm looking at people that are not saying it, so we ain't going to move till we get on one accord. Say good morning. All right. We still, we still coaching. We still coaching. Say good morning again. Good morning. Now say praise the Lord. All right. Psalm 113, we're going to read it. There's a couple verses I believe the Spirit of the Lord wants us to, to uh, be aware of. Put it on the board for me so we can read it loud. Everybody can read it, whether you got your Bibles or not. Praise God. Look, because we're going to obey God. Look at your name and say, it's time to obey God. Okay, where are my young people at? Raise your hand. Y'all come up here where I can see you. Yeah, come on. Put your phones down. Put your phones away. Cut your phones off. Put your computers and your laptops away. Yeah. yeah, come on. One day you'll appreciate this. Amen. You can have a seat. Yeah, one day you'll, appre you'll appreciate this. Amen. Thank you, young people. Clap your hands for the young people. That's me too. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. All right, Psalm 113. Praise God. We still, we still part of worship here. Some of you have come in cold. Some of you have come in cold. But look what the word says. Let's read it. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What's his name? Y'all Muslims. What's his name? 
Y'all don't act like it. What is his name? Jesus. All right, now here we go. I'm going to keep it real here. Now, today's Super Bowl Sunday, right? Huh? And the only drawback I have when we put on our costumes or we are thinking about eating and those kinds of things is that we lose focus. That's the only drawback I have about it. Now, how many going to watch the game and be honest? Raise your hand. When your team win, you're going to make a little bit of noise. Yeah. So you know it was going to come. You're going to have to make more noise in this service than you're going to make if Dallas run a touchdown. <laughs> okay? Because God is jealous. Now, Dallas ain't playing. The Rams. We a Ram team here. We all Rams in this room. Watch it now. Yeah, we, we in Rams. But listen, the Lord's going to, he don't mind us having a little fun and enjoying the day. This is becoming a national holiday. But he going to be jealous if you hollering and getting excited with everybody else, even if you don't understand football, and you didn't do that in service. There ain't no sense in you hollering about, my God, I'll, come on, come on. And all that pressure you're going to be feeling, because even ladies watch Super Bowl. Yeah. If you cheat God, God's going to be like a jealous lover that saw you hollering at somebody else, more excited about somebody else than him. So we can be in the world, but not of the world. But this next few minutes, the Spirit wants us to celebrate Jesus. Come on bring the word. We have with us, amen, apostle teacher, J.R. Armstrong and his yeah. wife. Yeah. Amen. And he's going to bring the word. But the Holy Spirit wants to manifest and prepare us a little better. Amen. So let's take a few minutes. Let's clear our minds. Young people, don't make me go through all the drill, but let's lift our hands. Come on. Now, the song said, my hands lifted up, but most of us sang with our hands down. My, my heart is ready to receive. All right, put them down. Good. Good to know. Now, let's read together. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, Praise O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2. Name of the Lord, for this time forth. And evermore. That means right now. Okay? Not wait until something happens, but right now. Verse 3. Because there's a, there's a couple good verses in here that I got to pick out, show you the Holy Ghost is going to rock your world when you hear these. Come on. Amen. That's from 7 o'clock this morning. Name of the Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Why? Because this could be your last time. Verse 4. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Now, get this, young folks and everybody. The Lord is high above our nation. The nation. The nation, every nation, and it says, and his glory above the heavens, his glory, now I'm going to give you this here, his glory is above the heavens, we're in the earth and then the Lord's in heaven, but his glory is above the heavens, because look at verse 5, look at verse 5, who is like unto the Lord our God? reason we worship him and we as his creatures stand. Come on, stand up, young people. Y'all young, y'all can stand up all day. You know why we do it? Because the Lord is high. Who is like unto our God? And he dwelleth on high. He dwelleth in high place. He's worthy for you and me to praise him. Verse 6, check this out. Listen, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. That rocked my world. 
The Lord that we serve, we always say God is in heaven, but God is so far above heaven that to look in heaven, he has to humble himself. <laughs> and you won't praise him? Read it. It says, who humbled himself to behold heaven. That means he has to get down just to look at heaven. And if we act like because we got a nice car and some food and a little money, we like I owe us something. Who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven. That rocks my world. I will never, I will never praise God the same. I read that about 3 o'clock this morning. Come on, lift your hands and praise him. He's exalted. He's high. Everybody. God is so big. He's so vast. He's so, he's so holy. He's so perfect. He's so right. He's so worthy of, of your air. He gives air, constant air to breathe, young people. He gives strength. He gives you youth. He gives you, he makes you old. He lets you live. Somebody passed away. Last night, somebody that I'm familiar with, a first lady of a church, pastor without a wife. She was a warrior, too. 63 years old. People are dying. And we're going to sit around like God owes us some more candy or something. People are poor. I hate to bring it to you guilty, but who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven. That's blew my mind. He, God don't dwell in heaven. He dwells above the heaven. He's that big. Yeah. So you can't sit down on him. Yeah. Just don't forget that if you don't anything. Come on, one more minute. One more second. One more second. Just thank him. This is what makes us different from other religions. We celebrate our God. Hey, man, we don't have to just stay on a rug or a mat. We get up and celebrate him. Because our God, he will humble himself to look at heaven. But he's so loving that he even humbled himself to look at earth beyond heaven. And he see you. And when you lift your hands, when you praise him, young people, you ain't too cool, you ain't too cute. Go to the children's hospital and you'll see some of them in there. Twisted. Praise him. Come on, daddy. Come on, mama. We got to set the example for the kids. Come on. That was my daughter right there, but I ain't going to ever let my children beat me praising the Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm not competing with you, but you ain't going to beat me praising God. You've been too good to me. Come on. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. He raised up the poor out of the dust. That's me. He see poor people. Or he see people who, who, who need stuff. Who need hope, need life. Come on, he raises us out of the dust. Come on. You're having a bad day, the Lord can change it. It says it right there. He raised the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That's, that's, a, that's a pile of manure. He gets you out of manure. Life can leave you in manure. You can live in manure. Your marriage can be a manure. Your health can be a manure. You know what's the street word for that. He gets you out of stuff. Come on, praise him. Thank him for getting you out of some manure. He washes manure off of us. Verse 8. That he may set him with princes. So if you poor and you've been down, he get the manure, clean you, heal you, so you can set with princes, set with dignified people, people that think they something. He puts you in there. You somebody to the Lord. You ought to come on praise him. When he humbled himself to look at heaven and then look at earth, he see you. And he see you in the, in the dunghill, in the dust. Oh, let's praise him. Come on with your mouth. Come on. We can praise him with music going on, but let's praise him with that. 
Open your mouth and say thank you. Anybody ever gave you something? You're giving your life today. Sometimes this old body hurt. But you know what? I read a scripture, Romans 8 and 11. It says, I was hurting the other day. And I read a scripture and it says, If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, it will quicken your mortal body. So God said, I'll make you your mortal body alive. You're looking at a person whose body has been quickened. Because of the Holy Spirit. That's why we worship him. That's why we worship him. Because if the spirit is in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. That means the natural body. It'll bring it alive. It, yeah. Ask God, give me the Holy Spirit so I can wave my hands. Come on. Come on. They're doing a dance in L.A. I've seen it on the, 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 uh, the Olympics. I didn't never heard of it, but they call it whacking. Y'all know about it, but I didn't know about it till last night. They call it whacking, so I looked it up. What is whacking? Whacking is when the young folk dance. It came out in California in the 90s, and you dance, and you, you just everything is all of this. God is worthy of your whacking. I got broke shoulders, but I'm a whack. That's what this is. This, this, they tell you it's really a wave offering. Come on, give God a wave offering. If the world can whack, we can wave. Come on, young people. Because God dwells in the midst of praise. Verse 9, take me to the end. It says, he maketh the barren woman to keep house. That means he's opened up wounds that are closed. If he can do that, he can heal you. How many got sickness today? Disease. Stay there. The Lord's going to minister to you today. Come on. If he can open up the woman with a barren wound, then he can heal you. He can touch your sick body. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than, come on now. Read it again. He make it the barren womb woman to keep high. And to be a joyful mother of children. Praise be the Lord. Now, if God can do that, then he can heal your condition. And those of you that say, I ain't got none, keep living. Come on, let's praise him. Open up the womb for me. Open up my womb. Hallelujah. I'm a barren woman, Lord. Yeah, I'm a barren woman. Come on. I want to keep house. I want to be joyful. And I want to have children. That means I want to have life. Verse 10. Verse 10. Okay, praise God. All right, all right. Clap your hands for him. Clap your hands. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. So what we're going to do, amen, at this time, we're going to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings, amen. and then we're going to give the speaker plenty of time. Amen. But clap your hands for God, our Savior, Jesus, because he's worthy to be praised. Come on. Oh, that wasn't a good clap. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, some of y'all got to quit having other conversations when the Holy Ghost is moving. Y'all got to quit being distracted, robbing God. Amen. Because God has promised that he's going to do a great thing in this whole house. Way bigger than what you can imagine. But now, you can't treat God like he, is, uh, he, he lives here got to treat him like he a guest. Amen. You have to welcome him in. Yes, Lord. You can't treat him like he got the key to get in here. You got to treat him like he's company. Amen. If you learn that principle, you will never leave the house of God. I don't care where you go. You got to get it out of your mind. God's in that house because this is brick and stone. 
God's in temple. But I feel like the Lord wants to do more. So I pray that you'll keep your heart open to receive. Amen. Because we're not just trying to gather. And those that make it today will make it. We're not just trying to gather. We want to glorify God. And the reason we have you to pray, praise like that, is because you got to make room for it. Amen. You have so much on your mind. But at this time, we're going to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are giving through cash out, you can cash out SMM, SFM Harvest, SFM Harvest. Or if you want to give to Tithely, those of you who are watching, you can give to T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. T-I, the word tithe, dot L-Y. Or you can simply bring your offering. Give God your best. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for him. We're going to pray. Then we're going to turn you into the hands of our usher. Praise God. God bless you. Holy Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this privilege to give. Thank you, Lord, that you are providing. You've given us seed to sow and bread for our food. Now bless these offerings. Receive them like you receive Abel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're in the hands of our usher. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, triple king. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your help yesterday, my brother. Appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How you doing, Jason? My brother. God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good to see you today. Look at somebody, tell them, it's good to see you, for real. Somebody says it's good to be seen. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous runneth to a river of good stream. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. You know why we praise him? Because he's good. Oh. Now stand on your feet and let's praise the Lord again. Come on. Praise the Lord for the opportunity to give, to plant. So, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel God's presence. Remain standing if you would. I met this young man here recently through uh, another couple, praise God, and uh, we just hit it off right away. Just a great spirit. You're going to be blessed today. I was on my way to Dallas last week, two weeks ago. And I said I wasn't going to tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. Because it's going to trouble that next time somebody ride with me, they ain't going to want to, they're going to want to drive. But we was, I got talking to this brother about a couple hundred miles outside of uh, Dallas, it was. And he don't even know this. I got so caught up in the spirit, you know, and uh you need to take vacations when you ain't got to be somewhere like right now. Because I thought, Lord, thank you, everybody can't do this. But I got so caught up in the spirit. And since I don't know Dallas that well, and I had GPS on one phone and I'm talking to him on the other phone, I'm expecting the GPS to say, hey, Steve, turn around, stop, go back. It didn't. I got 150 miles on the other side of Dallas. Before we hung up the phone, 
But it wasn't nothing but God in the word. We just, <laughs> he don't even know this. And I didn't want to tell it because people think, well, he, I won't drive him. I got to tell him where to turn. No, I got caught up in the spirit. I'm driving. I just went through Dallas. I was down in Waco somewhere, and then I finally, we hung up. I said, okay, brother, I think I'm about ready to pull into the city. And I stopped and got gas. Somebody said, uh, how far am I from the city? They said, sir, you 140-something miles south of Dallas. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> so <laughs> some of y'all need to get free, get in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all would have tripped out. The trip would have been terrible. But I was by myself, thank God. Amen. And uh, my loving wife wouldn't have said a word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I was 140-something miles on the other side of Dallas, and I had to be at the event at 6 o'clock. And I to go to hotel, check in, all that, man, I drove back. But you know what? It was just me and Jesus. <laughs> and instead of getting frustrated, I thanked the Lord that I could do that. I said, no, this is the way, because I just, just took my time and praised him. But he was the cause. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to praise the Lord today, because we know he's going to get us on the other side of Dallas. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Clap your hands for apostle teacher yeah. J.R. Armstrong and his lovely yeah. wife. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Just make yourself wherever you like to go. And you can introduce his own wife. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Alleluia. Alleluia. Say it again. Alleluia. Not hallelujah. I want you to say, Alleluia. 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 How you doing? Say it again. Alleluia. That's Hebrew for praise you. So who are you going to praise? 